Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. Today, the sermon that we're talking about, the sermon it is entitled, The Battle Worth Fighting. We're going to be looking at verses 10 to 13. And Paul opens up our key text for the series. He's teaching about the battle that every believer faces. A battle that is not seen, but is happening in our everyday lives. A battle that is not in the physical, that we can feel or touch, but a battle that is happening in the spiritual realm. A battle that can explain to you sometimes why you feel there's oppression on you. Sometimes, a battle that can explain to you why sometimes it's hard to follow God. Why sometimes you're tempted. Why sometimes we continue to waver in our faith. It's the battle that he's talking about. And I want to read it again in Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. If you have your Bibles, we can talk about it. We can read about it here. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. Let's pray. God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is alive. Today we open our hearts. May you speak to us. Illuminate to us, God, what you have for us, so specifically in our lives today. I pray, God, Lord Jesus, that you just remove anything of me that is not from you. May you just speak today. We bless you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you today that the battle that Paul is talking about in the scripture is a battle that is, you are facing, that we are all facing. It's a battle that is real and a battle that is worth fighting. And even though you can't physically see it, I want to encourage you that you need to fight it. Amen. You see, a lot, a lot of the times I feel like this battle is missed because we can't see it. A lot of the times I feel like it gets kind of the low priority because it, it, we can't see it. And whether you do this or not, whether you're conscious about it or not, at the beginning of every year, we kind of all decide what battles we want to face. We all kind of say, okay, this year I'm going to fight the health battle. I'm going to make sure I work out. I'm going to make sure I eat right. Maybe this year I'm going to fight the financial battle. I'm going to make sure I save. I'm going to try to do work really hard. Make sure I don't spend all my money on food. Amen? Amen. 
Maybe it's the relationship battle where you're just like, hey, I'm going to put a priority on my friends, my family. I'm going to make sure that I develop my relationship. You see, we all do this, especially at the beginning of the year where we see the battles in our life and we decide what to fight. And then we look in our toolbox to say, how can I fight this this year? I want to tell you, don't miss the spiritual battle. Don't miss it. Even though you can't see it, it is one of the most important, if not the most important battle of your life. Why? Because let me tell you, it deals with your soul and your spirit. It deals with the inside where peace and love and joy come from. And when this is off, when we're broken on the inside, when our relationship with God is divided, I'll tell you, every other battle will seem like you still haven't won. I've seen people in their life that have conquered all of these battles. I have witnessed through my eyes people who have won every battle but have lost this battle and are still left in the same place, empty. So I want to encourage you today, fight this battle. Some of you here simply might might not be fighting this battle because you, you never knew about it. Or you, you haven't actively decided to fight it. Some of you here, you've seen the impact of doing this on your life. You've seen it, that you're just wavering in your faith. That, you know, I still come to church, I still do all these things, but I still feel like I'm not there, I'm not advancing, I still feel broken inside. Maybe it's because we're not fighting the spiritual battle. I want to tell you, that's where Satan wants to keep you. He wants to keep you in a place where you don't think this battle is real, where we don't have to fight this battle, where we just got to do whatever it takes. But I want to tell you, it impacts everything in our life. And I want to tell you also, encourage you, there is hope for you. There's hope. And that's why we're talking about it today. But the first place that we all need to start, where we're starting this series, is that we have to understand the bottom line The battle is real, and it's worth fighting. To gain ground this year, we have to desire to fight it. We have to desire to advance. And as a family, I want want us to do this together as we open the year, that we would declare and that we would move forward, that we would gain ground, that we would fight, that we would stand firm. But we need to understand about what it is. That's what we're going to spend my time with you today, to understand what the spiritual battle is. Friends, let me tell you, what you don't know, you cannot overcome. What you don't name, you cannot overcome. So we have to learn about the spiritual battle. And maybe some of you here know it. I hope it encourages you. But some of you here today don't even know you're in a battle. And that's why we got to talk about it. So I'm going, to take, I'm going to take my time to talk about three truths today that we need to understand as we go through this series. And the first truth is today is that the devil is our enemy. That's what we first need to understand. The devil is our enemy. The opposing side of your life, the enemy of your life is the devil. Ephesians 6, 11 It says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Apostle Paul identifies that the struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the dark world. It's against the spiritual forces of evil. And what we need to understand today is our real enemy is the devil. Our real enemy is the demons and the evil spirits. That's our real enemy. What does this mean? The enemy, unfortunately, is not your mean boss. The enemy is not that person in your life that gossips about you. Your enemy is not your neighbor who keeps complaining about you. Your enemy is not your spouse that that, that you think is against you. They are not your enemy. The enemy is not flesh and blood. But let me tell you that, that we need to understand this because a lot of us spend all of our time fighting the wrong thing. We spend all of our time and Satan uses that to divide us. 
so that we would be in division with one another. Let me tell you, from reading the Bible and the scripture, God will never tell you to harm somebody. God will never tell you that. He says, love one another. So what does that mean for us? That, that, that people in your life that inconvenience you, because I get it, there are people that inconvenience you. Can I get an amen? Amen. The people in your life who do do things against you, yes, it may harm you temporarily, but let me tell you, the devil is to destroy you. He's out to destroy. First Peter 5, 8 says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I, which is Jesus, have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You see, his mission is destruction. And he destroys us from the inside by destroying our relationship with God, letting sin entangle us, eat us, the bondage inside of us. He wants you to be away from God. In Ephesians 6, 11, it says the devil's schemes. See, the devil is planning and scheming against you. He is working and, and, and trying to find ways. He's prowling around, waiting to destroy you. See, his, his mission is destruction. But let me tell you his method. His method is deception. You see, the enemy, Satan, he is the master of deception. He, he twists the truth. He, he tries to make you believe that, that what you're doing is right, even though it goes against what God says. He tries to get you to buy a lie so that you live it out and you destroy your life. Recall Genesis 3. Genesis 3, the first time that we see the devil, the first time that in the scriptures where we're starting to see Satan, recall what he does. God, if you don't know the account of the creation account, God comes in. He tells Adam and Eve what? Anybody here with the Bible quiz? Anybody? He tells Adam and Eve what? He says, do not eat from the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat it, you will die. Then the enemy comes in. What does the enemy say? He says, you won't certainly die. And then he starts to talk about, you'll gain wisdom. You'll be like God. He, he, he tries to tell all these things, twist the truth, to speak to the desires of Adam and Eve. In Genesis 3, 6, it says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eye, also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. See, that's what Satan does. He doesn't tell you what's right. He tells you what you want to hear. He tells you what your flesh wants, the, the things that your, your desires inside that will lead you to the wrong thing so that we walk it out, so that we end up destroying ourselves. We end up trapped in brokenness. Genesis 3.13 then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate it. You see, the method of Satan is deception. He's gonna try to confuse you. He's gonna try to trap you. Even when Jesus was in the wilderness in the gospel accounts, what happened? Satan appears and he, he tries to quote scripture to Jesus. Trying to get Jesus all twisted up, speaking to the desires of Jesus. Jesus was fasting. He's trying to speak to his desires to get Jesus to walk in a way that would destroy him. That's what he does. He sells you on a lie. So you live it out. And it destroys you. The best way I can illustrate this, anybody here starting a new diet? <laughs> anybody? <laughs> You remember in December I said, I love December because the diets are off. Well, I don't like January because the diets are on. Okay, so the best way I can illustrate this to you of being bought into a lie, let me tell you, there's a lot of diets out there, and I'll tell you, the place where you can be easily deceived is nutrition. Like, there are so many philosophies out there. I don't know, can I eat almonds? Can I eat eggs? I have no clue. 
But there's so much information out there that you can find any diet, any plan that kind of tell, speaks to your desires, right? Like you, you can go online and say, okay, this diet tells me that I can eat frosting 24-7 icing, and if I eat it between 1 and 2, like just 1 and 2 p.m., I'll, I'll lose weight. Like we can buy into that lie. What happens is we start to eat the frosting. Why? Because we love frosting. Anybody here love frosting? Amen. Hallelujah. Or let me change it to ice cream. That, that's probably better. We start to get, we start to eat this stuff. And let me tell you, what did the person of the diet do? All he did was sell you on a lie. But then you went and you lived it out and it destroyed you. That's what Satan does. He sells you on a lie and then you start to live it out and you'll find it start to chip away at you, but he takes it a step further. And this is what I want you to really hear. Once you open your life to Satan, he then comes in. And there's a spiritual oppression that comes in. It's not just, you know, la di da No, he comes in. And he starts to make his way around your life. That's what he does. He, 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 he tries to twist the truth. And if you don't know the word of God, you will be easily deceived. If you do not know the word, he will make you follow him in his ways. See, the devil is a liar. And he manipulates us to follow him. The question I want to ask you, who do you follow? What truth is guiding your life? Because if it's not aligned to the word of God, if it is not the truth of the word of God, you better believe that you're following the truth of the devil. That's just the honesty. The reality, that's what Satan does to us. Who do you follow? In John 8, Jesus, he was rebuking some of the people who was hearing. They were saying, where are your disciples? He's saying, you're not, you're not listening to what I'm saying. John 8, 44, let's read it. It says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Friends, we have to know the enemy is a liar. He will trick us to doubt the word of God. Like we gotta take it seriously, because he can really sway you. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14, it says, Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. He's doing everything to steal the word of God from you. When Jesus is teaching about the, the, the parable of the sower, you guys remember that scripture? It says that, that the Satan comes and immediately snatches the word before it gets in your heart. That's what he's trying to do, and it breaks my heart as a pastor, as I'm getting more information that we are becoming more and more biblically illiterate. That, that, that the next generation might not even have a relationship with the word of God. I want to tell you, my friends, especially the next generation, like TikTok sermons are great, inspir inspir inspirational quotes from preachers are great, but they are not the full word of God. You are not meant to snack. You are meant to feast on the word of God. Because if you don't, the enemy will deceive you. And he will lead you astray. That's what he does. And all it takes is a simple opportunity. Ephesians 4, it talks about don't give the devil a foothold. Don't give him any opportunity to enter in your life. Because let me tell you, friends, once he's in, he's in. Once you've allowed, through that little dirty, dirty lie, that, that dirty joke, that, that little gossip, that little bad thing I was not supposed to watch, that little disrespect to my parents, that, that dishonor to my coworkers, that dishonor to my, my company, those little things, once he's in, he's in. Then he makes a way around your life and he starts to destroy your marriage and he starts to destroy your self-worth, ultimately ending in a destruction of your relationship with God. See, the devil is real. 
And I've seen him destroying people as he's gripped them and he's got them under his influence and destroying themselves. And he wants you to believe he's not real. He wants you to believe demons aren't real. What Pastor Paul's talking about, it's not real. But let me tell you flat out, the devil is real. Demons are real. If you read the Bible, you see them. And they're still here to this day. So what I want to tell you, don't play with the devil. Don't see how far you can go. Don't play with him. Why am I telling you this? Not to make you fearful, but to open your eyes to a battle that you may not have been fighting. To open your eyes to an enemy that may have never had your attention. See, because if we're going to gain ground this year, we got to take a step of faith. we got to realize everything that's going to happen. And we have to say, devil, no more. Yeah. That's what we got to do. we got to come in our faith. we got to get in our position. And we got to say, devil, no more. No more lies. No more, no, not over my family, not over my health, not over my career, not over my circumstance. Devil, no more. We got to come to that place where we realize the enemy and decide to fight. I want you to declare that today, devil no more. Oh, uh, oh, the devil's like, all right, guys, great, cool. Let's declare, devil no more. Not today, Satan, not today. That's the first truth about the battle. There is an enemy, and it is the devil. But the second truth, what we also need to know, and what I want to encourage you in today, is that, that the side that you're on, it's the winning side. It is the winning side. And ultimately, the Lord is strong, the Lord is mighty. See, what you need to understand about this battle is that the devil bows down to Jesus. What you need to understand about the struggle is that, that it's not evenly weighted here. Like it's not like the, the devil and, and, and God are the same power and, and they're going at each other. No, 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 that's not it. You got, anybody here have a small dog? Small dog, like little, yep, thank you for being honest. Uh, small dog, yeah, okay, you guys are embarrassed of your small dogs. But um, I'm kidding. Small dogs, what I've noticed, my sister has two small dogs, and what I've noticed about being around these small dogs, and this might not be your dog, so I'm not targeting them by any way, but um, when a big dog comes up, you better believe that dog is yapping, <laughs> like yap, yap, yapping, and you're standing there like, what? Like that dog's like gonna beat you, man. <laughs> Let me tell you, this, this picture, that's the devil. It says, the devil, the devil is all bark, but no bite. You see, he is under the authority of Jesus. Acts 10, 38, we're reminded of this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Because God was with him. You see, the demons... They tremble at the name of Jesus. He would deliver people with one word. Through the cross, the power of Satan is defeated. Yeah. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 reminds us, it says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he, which is Jesus, too shared in their huma humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery, by their fear of death. You see, Jesus came and he fulfilled the promise of God in Genesis 3 to crush the head, to strike the heel of the serpent. Jesus defeated Satan. Friends, Satan has no power over you. All, all he has are lies. So take heart today. Be encouraged today. 
Take heart that yes, maybe in the past you've lost some battles. Maybe in the past you've kind of gone astray. But take heart because the the war is the Lord's. The victory is the Lord's. We know the final fate of Satan. We know the end of the story. We know what happens. And there will be a day, my friends, where we no longer will be tempted. Where we no longer will be spiritually oppressed. There will be a day where where, where the, the ultimate judgment of Satan will come come and he will burn in the lake of fire. Amen. Revelation 20:10, the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So you remind yourself that Jesus has the victory. See, you are not hopeless, but, but you are with the one who is strong and mighty, the one who no one can stand against. And yes, though we may face this struggle, be reminded the Lord does not face this struggle, that he is in power, he is in control. So recall to your mind John 16, where we have peace, because though we might face trouble momentarily, we take heart because we put our trust in the one who has overcome the world. And his name is Jesus. I want you to declare that today. Write in the chat, I'm on the winning side. With God on our side, nothing can stand against us. And that's the last truth. We are fully equipped to win every battle. Hallelujah. See, Ephesians 6.10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. I want to encourage you today that you have the strength of the Lord on your side. Be strong in him. Strong in the Greek is in dynamo, which means the imparting of ability, that empowering That's the confidence that we have, that the Lord will empower us, that the Lord will strengthen us. So my friends, be strong in the Lord. This 2023, be strong in the Lord and not in yourself. See, there's so many things that have come at us these last three years. And if you're like me, (laughs) you're like my family, like there's just so much that has come. And us, you know, we've come to the end of our physical strength. There's so many times where it's just like you try to put your gifts, your talents, you try to do it all with, your, with everything that you got, but you know those battles, you just come short. Like there's nothing you can do. Our testimony, I want to encourage you, is that once we come to that place, I'll tell you, when you turn to the Lord and you pray and you recite the word, and and we heard it in the testimony today, you know, once you turn to him, what happens? Strength rises. Strength comes. And then you're able to face what's ever in your way. I want to encourage you. It is not by your strength, not by your power, but by his spirit that we are overcomers. Be strong in the Lord. It's by his spirit that's in us that we can overcome everything. The same spirit that raised Christ. Paul says famously, Philippians 4, 13, we know this verse. He, despite all that he's going through, if you look at his life and everything he's faced, he says what? He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Look at this verse, Ephesians 1, 18 and 23. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, 
the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. What you see there? His incomparably great power for us who believe. That's the access we have. That's the power that's inside of us. Ephesians 2 says we're seated uh, up with, the, with Christ. See, the devil will try to trick you and say you have no power that you're powerless, but I want to remind you that you do have power, that you have the same spirit of Christ inside of you, that God has given you the authority in Jesus' name. When the 72 disciples were sent out by Jesus, they were shocked. You know, they started to cast demons out in Jesus' name. They came back to Jesus. They were so overjoyed, like, we have so much power. And look what Jesus said to them in Luke 10. He says, he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Look what he says. I love this. Don't rejoice because you have the authority. Yes, demons will bow down to you. Don't rejoice because of that, but rejoice because nothing will stand in your way between me and you. That your name is written in heaven. Rejoice because of that, my friends. That's the reason. That's the truth that we have. That's why we continue to fight the battle. To be whole spiritually. To be in communion with him. So stand firm, church. Take your place. This 2023, decide to fight the battle and believe that you are equipped to win in Jesus' name. <laughs> believe. James Ward says it so simply. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, submit. Put your strength. Come humbly. Put your strength in God. Resist the devil. Take your stand. Decide that you, you're, you're fighting on God's side and the devil will flee from you. You know, as I close today, I call up the worship team. As we've learned about all these things, I want to ask you the simple question starting this new year. Will you fight the battle? This coming 2023, will you decide to fight the battle? Will you say that this is a priority in your life? Will you make that decision to say that, you know, out of all the battles I'm facing, this is the one I want to fight. And this is the one that's going to change my life. I pray that you're ready to take your place. Because if we, if we fight this battle, we will overcome. But what we have to know is that the battle is real and it's worth fighting. The last part of our passage, Ephesians 6, 13, it says, therefore, put on the full armor of God. See, knowing all of this, put on all that God has given you. And then, and then it says, so that when the day of evil comes, not if the day, when the day. And look at what he depicts to us. And this is the, the picture I see of our church as we gain ground this year. You may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. See, that's what I want for us this year. That after we have been through everything, that yes, we started standing, you better believe we're going to be found standing at the end of it. After everything is done, that we will make our steps forward.